storms, suffering, and death. Why? Why do these things happen? How many of you would like to go through an experience in which your beloved friend dies? Or maybe one of your family members goes through a disease that they have to suffer until they die. I remember this, this summer I, was on, I went to visit my grandmother. And the reason why is because she had Alzheimer's. When she got tired, we were, we were on our way from a hike. She was very tired. And she turned around and she started asking me questions. Who was I? And why, where, where, I, where I lived and if there was mountains where I live. And I'm, you know, I'm from Texas, so there's definitely no mountains in Texas. So... But so many people become atheists because they look at this world and they can't figure out why all these things happen if God is such a loving God as the Christians say that he is. Today I would like to talk about some reasons why trials happen. And also I would like to share with you how to get through trials. But before we do, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity to preach your word, Lord. I ask that you let it not be my words, Lord, but it be yours. And as Jim always prayed when he was here for wicked prayer, I ask that you hide me behind the shadow of your cross, that only you be lifted up and seen, Lord. I pray that you let your Holy Spirit come and enlighten up this sermon. Let it teach me and also my, also my audience, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I share to you why trials happen, I would like to kind of set the stage a bit. If, if you would turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. God created the world. How did he create it, though? Did he create it with death, suffering? No, he created a perfect world. And when you, when you build something, are you going to build what you don't want to build? Or are you going to build what you want to build? You're going to build what you want to build, right? So that's the same with God. When he created the world, he created the way he wanted to build it, which means that he didn't want all the suffering and trials to happen. So before I go to talk about you know, trials and everything, I'd like to keep in, I would like you to keep in mind that God doesn't want the trials to happen and that it was our choice that brought the trials to us. And God had to make a choice whether to destroy us or to use trials instead. And he used trials. So now with that said, I would like to turn, go into my, my first point. Why trials happen. If you would turn with me to Exodus 13, 17 to 18, it says this. Then it came to pass... When Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. So you see here, they have two, two, two routes that they, that, they, um, that, that, that they could take. And God led them the way of the wilderness instead of the near route, the, the short route, where all they had to do was go in and fight the Philistines and then ride into the Canaan and fight there. God led them 
the way of the wilderness where it would take even longer and they would still have to go through war. Why did God do that? And if you look in the story of Jesus as well, you can see that after he got done with his baptism, he went to the wilderness too. He could have just right there started his ministry, but no, God led him to the wilderness. Why is that? If you would turn with me to Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 3, it says this, So he humbled you, allowed you to go through hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You see, God led them the way of the wilderness to teach them. And if you look at the story, they learned the Ten Commandments. They learned all the Levitical laws. You see, God had to prepare them before they reached into the big task of fighting, of going to war, instead of hitting them straight with a big task, he had to kind of prepare them. You know, that's the, the same with, with us, too. If we... God leads, God sends trials to prepare us for the things to come. So now that we know a little bit of reasons why trials happen, let's, let's go into our, our second point, how to get through them. In the book of Job, Job is experiencing some trials. What did he do? Let's ask Job. Job, what did you go through? What did you do when you were going through these trials? I persevered. I was determined, and I kept going with God. I stayed with God. Right here's the answer. When you are faced with trials... Don't just go and curse God and give up. Keep going. Persevere. Ask God, why am I going through this trial? In fact, that's what Jesus did. When he was about to face the biggest trial that humanity could even think of, what did he do? He goes to the garden and he prays. And that is what got him through. My friends, even though this world seems like it's doomed, all these trials, all these different things going on in this world. My encouragement to you is to persevere. Now that we know how to get through trials, let's, I would like to share with you some hope. As we said earlier, God does not want trials to happen. He wishes that he could just get rid of them all together. And he, in fact, is going to do that as well. For in Revelation 22, verse 20, 
He says, surely I am coming quickly. He's wanting to take us home. And my friends, even though, like I said, it seems doomed, seems like we can't go through these trials, it seems hard, it seems, it seems too difficult, like we just want to give up. Remember that God is there and that he doesn't want you to go through these trials. Also, in Romans 28, 8, 28 says, everything works for good to them that love God. And that includes trials. Even though it may seem so hard and difficult, it will lead to good. The devil just wants to discourage you, but it will lead to good. So my appeal for you today is to remember when you're faced with these trials to get down on your knees. Ask the Lord. I trust, Lord, I, I trust in you that you do not want me to go through these trials and also know that you can help me and you can teach me something from this trial and you can help me through he will give you the masterpiece if you didn't remember all that of what I just shared just remember this trials mean benefit. I would like to share a story in closing as well about trials meaning benefit. Um, there was a man, he was preaching the word of God. He came across this very verse as well. And he was preaching to his audience that everything will work for good to them that love God. It was the time when Mary was on the throne, Queen Mary of England. And Queen Mary didn't, didn't like his preaching, so she sent his soldiers to go and capture him and to burn him at the stake. So they go and they, they capture him. As they're going, though, it kind of gets late, and they have to stop for an inn. And this, this man is, is an old man, and as he's getting down, he trips, and he falls off the carriage, and he breaks his ankle. Right then and there, this man could have just said, Lord, I, I've been preaching all this time. I, I've been doing so much good stuff to you. And now you send me to the stake, and now this? But no. He stays firm to that promise found in Romans 8.28, that everything will work for good. And he believes with all his heart that this broken ankle that he has will work for good. Turns out that they weren't able to carry him on the way. To, to burn at the stake. He had to stay at the, 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 um, the inn until he healed up. As he healed up, w once he was all healed up and everything, um, a runner came, comes in just, just as they were about to leave to go back to the stake and declares that Mary was off the throne. And then now Elizabeth was on the throne. And Elizabeth would not have him go to the stake, would not allow that to happen. This trial literally 
worked out for good and saved his life. So my friends, even though it seems hard, just remember, just to trust in him that he has a, bitter, a bigger plan, a better plan, and he's molding your character. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you so much for this message, Lord. And speaking to my heart. And Lord, I just, just want to ask that you help us, Lord. When we're faced with a trial, that we don't give up, we persevere. We ask you, why are we going through this? And I just ask that you teach us, Lord. And build our character through these trials of life, Lord. And as we go on through the many tests and exams coming up and all the stress that we have, just remember, help us to remember that everything works for good to them that love God and are called according to your purpose, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.